I will explain you how to configure Keyclock for this integration, JavaScript application configuration, and finally I will take you through the demonstration. In order to secure the JavaScript application, it should be integrated with Keyclock via OpenID Connect protocol. Here on this diagram, you can see Keyclock and JavaScript applications are connected with OpenID Connect protocol. I will explain you the request flow here. As the first step, user access the JavaScript application and initiate a login. Most of the time, it will be done by clicking on a login button. Once login button is clicked, user will be redirected to the Keyclock application. Once redirected to the Keyclock application, a login form will appear and their user has to provide his credentials. If the credentials are valid, user will be successfully authenticated and user will be redirected to the JavaScript application. Once user is redirected to the JavaScript application, there will be some internal communications between the application and Keyclock server and after that, application will receive an access token and an ID token. ID token will be used to get users information such as first name, last name, email and so on. Access token will be used to call third party APIs. Access token will be added as a bearer token in the authorization header and external API calls can be made using an HTTP client. I'm going to show those things also in my example. Let's go to the implementation of this setup. Let me take you through the Keyclock configurations first. Now I'm in the Keyclock admin console. In order to connect the JavaScript application with Keyclock, we have to create a client to represent the JavaScript application. For that, I'm visiting the client section here and I create a new client. I put the client ID as JS client. Click next. I keep the standard flow enabled and disable the direct access grant type. Also, please note that I keep the client authentication disabled. If the client authentication is enabled, in addition to the client ID, JavaScript application has to use a client secret also to communicate with the Keyclock server. But since this is a public client, that means this full JavaScript application is loaded on user's browser, user can easily extract secrets and IDs. Because of that, we do not put a secret here. Therefore, we keep client authentication disabled and then click next. Here we need to put a valid redirect URI. Since I'm going to start my JavaScript application on localhost port 3000, I'm going to put that as a valid URL. Also, we need to put a valid web origin as well. So I put the web origin as HTTP 3000. If we have loaded an incorrect redirect URI, then authentication will be failed and a message will be shown by the Keyclock server. If web origins are not correct, a cross origin resource sharing related issue will be thrown and it will be shown on the browser's console. Now I save the client. Okay, client is successful saved and that's all we have to do in the Keyclock server. Let's move on to the JavaScript application. Now I'm on the JavaScript application. Yeah, I will describe only the important sections and rest of the parts are very easy to understand. As I mentioned earlier, this is a pure JavaScript application. Therefore, this application has only two files, which is the HTML file and other one is the JavaScript file. First, I will take you through the HTML file. Here you can see there are two imports. I have added a CSS file for styles, which is bootstrap file. And uh, I have added Keyclock JavaScript SDK library for the communication between Keyclock and this application. Here you can see the version is 22.0.3. This is the exact version my Keyclock server is also using. So whenever you choose the JavaScript SDK library, you need to match it with the Keyclock server's version. Uh, so in this section, you can see uh, there are some dual elements and I have added a few buttons to demonstrate the execution of this application. These are pretty obvious. I have added buttons like login button, logout, is logged in. Like that, I have added multiple buttons. I will show you their functionality soon. Let's visit the JavaScript code. Here you can see I have added an event listener for DOM content loaded and whole JavaScript code is written inside this event handler. As the first step here, I create the keyclock object. In order to create the keyclock client object, we need to provide a few parameters. The first one is the URL of the keyclock server. Other one is the keyclock realm name we are using. And other one is the client ID, which is JS client. 
I created this client a few minutes back. Here I have added the function to log all the events in a text box. You will understand this when I'm going through the demonstration. Here you can see I have initialized the key clock object by calling init method. For this init method, I have provided an object containing single parameter which is onload. Onload is set to check SSO. With this value, what happens is when the user logs into the application in the background it checks whether this user has a successful key clock session if there is a successful key clock session this application will receive an id token and an access token if there is no successful session application will still continue without having a session if we want this application to work only if there is a valid session we can set this value to login required if we put login required value for onload parameter then this application will be loaded only if user has a valid key clock session here you can see i have added a callback to the init function and rest of the code is added in that particular callback here with this init whether there's an authenticated object is passed and based on that we can determine whether the user is already authenticated or not in addition to that i have added event handlers for the buttons i have created in the index.html file so here you can see i have added an event handler to the login button which will call login function of the key clock client object and there's a logout button which will call the key clock logout function and like that i have created multiple event handlers so th this event handler is used to check whether the user is logged in or not and this one is to uh, show the access token and the, this one is to show the past access token and this is a special event handler as i mentioned earlier this is working as a single page application and this has to communicate with external apis to perhaps read some data or write data in order to call external apis most of the times external apis are secured and we have to use access tokens to invoke those apis so for that here you can see i have mocked an api call here what i am doing is uh, here when this call api button is clicked i i put this access token received from the key clock server as a bearer token to the authorization header and a request is sent to the external api so that part is implemented here you can change this api endpoints as necessary and you can reuse this code anywhere you want after that it's response and everything is logged those are the functionalities of this application okay let me take you through the demonstration key clock service is already running this javascript application needs to be served through a static file server you can use an nginx server or any static file server to serve these files i'm using a simple python file server to serve these files I started the python file server using the command shown on the screen. Let's go to the demonstration. Okay, now here you can see I have accessed the javascript application which is running on localhost 3000 port and you can see all the buttons are available and uh, now I click on the login button. Okay, here I log into the application. Okay, now here you can see a message is shown as use is authenticated and here now oh, i'm going to see the access token okay here you can see the access token which is shown as an alert and also it is visible here and also by clicking the show past access token button we can see the past access token as well this is the past access token and now i'm going to call an api before clicking the call api button I'm going to open my network tab. Okay, I'm now I'm going to click on call API button. Request is successful and I'm going to inspe inspect this request. Go to the request headers section. Uh, here you can see in the request headers our access token is added as a bearer token in the authorization header let's go back to the application we can see the logout button here okay let me check that on as well okay once logout button is clicked it is shown that use is not authenticated and again once checked on is logged in use is not logged in yeah yeah everything is working fine hope you got a solid understanding about 
integrating a JavaScript app with Geeklog. If you have any question, please put them as a comment. Thank you very much.